If you pursue appearances, you overlook the primal source. When we look at the world, particularly from the perspective of our visual field, we see displayed before us a world of discrete and distinct objects. The objects, for the most part, at any given moment, appear stable. The chair I sit on, the computer I work at, the desk in front of me, the lamp on my desk, my face in the mirror, all of these objects appear to have the capacity for enduring. Yet their true nature, their nature which transcends time and manifests eternity, lies in their ephemerality, their capacity for and existence as perpetual change. This discrepancy between the world of appearances and the actuality of things names one of the primary reasons for the necessity of spiritual practice. Though we may understand intellectually the changing nature of all things, and we may even understand change as the eternal itself, until we experience this at a deep level, which we can through meditation, appearances continue to have something deceptive about them. This deceptiveness lies in the ability of seeming stability to cover over what Sang Song calls the primal source. Primal source means the unfolding creativity and blossoming of each moment. When we fix upon appearances as beings, then we miss the primal creativity that constantly manifests and generously bestows its beauty upon us. We become yet another We become yet another object in the world, another essence, constantly in conflict with other objects and essences. In the previous couplet, Sang Song speaks of returning to the root. Here in this couplet, he addresses the consequences of not doing so. Pursuing appearances, we lose their meaning. Losing their meaning, we become isolated in the world. Returning to the root, or the primal source, meaning unfolds and, amazingly, the world of appearances blossoms before us.